Everybody's dancing and jumping too While the music's rocking, nobody's blue A funny little rhythm with a solid sound A boogie and a jumpy call a Birmingham bound I, I decided early in my career, I don't know when, but uh, my career, as you call it, was interrupted twice by the military. You know, I served in World War II and then I was recalled in January of 51 for Korea. I didn't go overseas during that war. But anyway, uh, I started giving serious thought to the fact that you couldn't make a very good living in the music business unless you were considerably well known. And so I decided that by age 35, if I wasn't well known enough to establish myself, or hadn't established myself well enough that I would be successful financially, I was going to get out of music business, which I did. A little rhythm with a solid sound, a boogie and a jump called the bourbon outbound. It became a number one song by Red Foley. I think there were 25 recordings of Birmingham Bounce on the market at the same time. Uh, Tommy Dorsey, uh, Lionel Hampton, and I can't remember all the people, but there, were, there was 20 some odd recordings of the record. Red Foley's became a number one hit. And uh, it's, you know, it's interesting, but on the internet right now, you can look up Tommy Dorsey and Lionel Hampton and all. And they have the best of Tommy Dorsey, the best of Lionel Hampton, and Birmingham Bounce is usually in there. Although I didn't know it did that well. <laughs> Decca Records wanted, wanted to do, wanted to take that and distribute it as a Decca record, which wasn't uncommon, it was known. A small record company would come out with very limited independent distribution that could not possibly compete nationally with the Deccas and the RCA Victors and those kinds of labels. So they tried to get the master, I guess you'd call it, from Bama Records and release it as a Decca recording. But the Decca guy, I mean the uh, Bama guy just wouldn't do it. Because he was doing so well with it, he thought, of course he didn't collect what all he should have collected from the record distributors. But anyway, that's the story of, of the Decca. That's how I got on Decca actually, as soon as I got it free from the Bama obligation, they signed me on Decca Records. Which came due, by the way, <laughs> The day after I got recalled to the active duty, or supposed to report to active duty. And I had, I don't know, seven days to report or something like that. And so I went through Nashville and did my first deck of session. And all the other deck of sessions I did were done in uniform. Little girl, little girl, I'm telling you, I don't know what I'm doing. Back then, they gathered a band around and the engineers put the microphones where they could pick up the musicians properly you know, and get a balance. And uh, it was one track on a tape. Usually they had started recording at 15 inches per second, so that's what it was usually recording at. And so they usually had mic'd everything, though. They, they mic'd the vocal and they mic'd all the individual instruments. And then they were mixed in the in the studio, maybe in the engineering in the room, controlling. And uh, that's the way we record. But most of my recordings were done in one take. I don't remember going over many of them more than one or two times. Maybe you, you, you can tell that from the recordings. <laughs> Boy, I have been very honored the fact that you know, I didn't become a star, of course. I became reasonably well known. But uh, starting in 1995, I started getting invitations to go to Europe to, to appear on shows that had four or five he either headliners or semi people like me, you know. And I've done about 10 or 12 of those in Europe. I've done them in Germany and I've done several in, in England, the United Kingdom. You know, when you record a song, unless that song becomes well known, you don't, you usually don't re ever sing it again. You know, you just don't, why are you going to sing a song nobody wants to hear, really, you know? It had a chance on records and it didn't sell well, so forget it. When I got to Munich, 
for this first show that I was on in Europe. Uh, I was in the middle of my first song when I realized that the kids in the audience were, were mouthing the darn song with me. They knew the words of that song. And it really choked me up because I had had to listen to records to learn my songs over. I had to learn my act, you know? <laughs> and they knew my act. It amazed me. And that happened everywhere I went in Europe. Well, there ain't no news like real man blue. Look what it's done to me. Well, you can start with all the members of the Grand Ole Opry except probably Hank Snow. Uh, not that he wasn't friendly with me, but I was personally known him. From about 1940 through the late 70s, they were all, you know, friends of mine. I, I've got literally dozens, I don't really know how many, of uh, autographed photos I have with those old friends. But, you know, there's Merle Travis and uh, you know, start with Hank Williams. Well, I never got a picture of Hank Williams, anyway. But, uh, you know, Ernest Tubb, Bill Monroe, Minnie Pearl was a very dear friend. And, uh, gosh, I'm sorry, Pee Wee King. We were just talking on the telephone a lot before Pee Wee died. I'm sorry, my memory's just kind of slipping, but that time period was time when I was very friendly with all of them. By the way, when you have a song that did well as Birmingham Bounce, everybody knew me. You know, I was well known among the business, not well known among the public, among the business. Entertainment. I wasn't as good as Elvis, that's <laughs> the first part. I think the second thing was that that music we were playing that I really did pioneer uh, was a music that appealed mostly to teen teenagers. And, uh, you know, I was barely five feet tall, <laughs> bald-headed, a <laughs> little heavy, and already married. So, you know, what kind of offering does that have to teenagers? It's not much to hold up as an idol. I, I don't think I had the the person, uh, personality and the personal appeal to, to, to appear, appeal to that audience. Well, there ain't no news like real man blue. Look what it's done to me. Wow.